Welcome back to Book Break. I'm starting today's video here outside the stunning Imperial War Museum in London because this year has now been 100 years since the end of the First World War. So in today's video we're going to have a look at everything that has changed in the last 100 years. Like did you know 100 years ago it would take you three and a half months to get to Australia? Now we can do that in pretty much one day. So let's have a look at everything else that's changed. By the end of the First World War women still only had partial suffrage, meaning only a very select group of women were allowed to vote and even that was really really recent the first women were granted the vote in 1918 so I'm standing here now in front of the suffragette memorial statue in Westminster there's also nearby a new statue dedicated to the suffragist Millicent Fawcett that was just opened in 2018 and these honor some of the women who were fighting for equality a hundred years ago of course that battle is still very much waging today we have a long way to go but things have changed phenomenally over the last a hundred years so one really good gorgeous book I wanted to tell you about on this topic is Suffragette by David Roberts. This is a gorgeous children's book with amazing illustrations all the way through that teaches us about the suffragettes and the suffragists, who they were and what they did. And I actually asked David Roberts himself to tell us a little bit more about the book. So here he is. Hello, my name's David Roberts. I'm a children's book illustrator. This is my latest book, Suffragette, The Battle for Equality. I became interested in the suffragette movement. When I was at school, a history teacher laid out lots of history books on the table and I saw this cover and on the cover was two ladies dressed in prison uniforms and the title was The Suffragettes. And I thought, and I wonder what they've done that's been so wrong that they've been sent to prison. And slowly the story unveiled itself, it revealed itself to me, this campaign, women had not been treated equally, and I was fascinated by it. So a hundred years ago, many women couldn't vote. They also wouldn't be allowed to open up a bank account in their own name. They wouldn't be allowed to serve on a jury, or they wouldn't be allowed to compete in the Olympics in anything other than a handful of selected sports. And again, even that was a very recent addition. So now, let's have a look at quite how much sport has opened up for women over the last century. The path to women's participation in sport has been painfully slow and we still have a long way to go before women's sports are celebrated and recognised equally to men's. But the last hundred years has made massive strides, like we are finally almost approaching 50% female participation in the Olympics. Eat the Sweat Play by Anna Kessel is a super positive and motivating book about the positive effect that sport can have on women's lives. And it encourages even the least sporty of girls, if you can't tell from my red sweaty face, that's me, to channel our carefree younger selves who used to love cartwheeling across playgrounds and climbing trees. And for a super inspiring story, pick up Butterfly by Yusra Vardini, the at the time teenage Syrian refugee who went from literally swimming from her life to competing in the Olympic refugee team. But okay, I'm out of breath now. So the story um, in the book is about, about me and my sister fleeing Syria and going to Germany actually. And our trip, which took 25 days, I competed in the um, first ever refugee Olympic team in the Olympics. Now I'm still a swimmer. My next goal is Tokyo 2020. I am good with ambassador for the UNHCR, um, the UN Refugee Agency, and um, I'm visiting refugees, I'm hearing their stories. But the world has changed a lot for men too, and one area that's made massive strides forward is mental health. The conversations about mental health are obviously incredibly important for people of any gender, but the stigma around men's mental health is particularly strong. But if you think in contrast to what the war poets are writing about and what they were struggling with, it's amazing that there are these days so many conversations going around about men's mental health. And one book that I've particularly enjoyed recently is The Stranger on the Bridge by Johnny Benjamin. And this is Johnny Benjamin's story of struggling with his own depression and suicidal thoughts until one day when he had actually decided to jump from Waterloo Bridge, he met a stranger on that bridge who spoke to him and saved his life that day. Six years later, Johnny actually tracked him down and they met again. And now they work together, campaigning for people to speak up more about mental health and get the help that they need, which is fantastic. And one of the biggest changes for all genders over the last century has been the massive improvement there has been in LGBTQIA plus rights. Again, there is still a lot of progress to be made, but today all people have equal rights to fall in love and get married. And pride parades across the country are, yes, still protests against the injustices that still do exist, but also places of joy and celebration. I'm here now in front of the Burdett Coutts Memorial, which was commissioned by the queer 19th century philanthropist Angela Burdett Coutts. 
events and commemorates, among others, the trans French diplomat and spy Chevalier Deon. Both of these are people whose identities and relationships were not accepted in the time they lived, and I'm proud that we're now living in a time that is finally moving towards true acceptance, even if there is still a lot that we need to do. And it makes me particularly happy to see how many YA and children's books now feature LGBTQIA plus protagonists, because that's a whole new generation of people who are being raised not to see just one type of relationship as the norm. As a teenager, I used to spend so much time reading teen romances, so now that books like Boy Meets Hamster by Birdie Milano exist, it is so great thinking that teenagers can now read these books and actually see their own experiences reflected in what they're reading. Boy Meets Hamster is a really cute summer romance set at a holiday caravan park, because why should happy love stories like that only be for one type of person? If you think that a hundred years ago, books that went in any way against the heteronormative default used to be banned, I think it's wonderful that today's teenagers can walk into a bookshop and actually buy a book that reflects the life that they're living. But probably the biggest changes of the last hundred years have to do with science and technology. And standing rather beautifully against the sun up there behind me is the Royal Observatory in Greenwich. Now that is not a new building. People from 1918 will be very familiar with it. It's been there for well over a hundred years. But the technology that we use now to look at space has changed so much. Anyone who time traveled forward from 1918 would be completely blown away. Just think, a hundred years ago, Pluto hadn't even been discovered yet. Now we've had time to discover it, and decide that it wasn't big enough to be a planet. And how do we know that stuff? It's all so far away. And of course there's the small matter of us landing on the moon. Science just blows my mind and people from 100 years ago would not be able to believe it. But of course the most immediately noticeable change in terms of science and technology has to be these. These little phones that we carry around in our pocket that can connect us to anyone in the world or download any information that we need. The internet and social media has come to completely define our generation and I don't think would even be able to explain it to people from 100 years ago. And a really interesting book that's all about social media and the effects that it's had on the world is Selfie by Will Storr. Now this is quite a scary look at quite how self-obsessed our society has become, but it also takes a historical view and goes all the way back to the ancient Greeks to question whether narcissism is something that's existed in us all along. So while people from 1918 might not have been able to understand selfies and Instagram, maybe they weren't so different from us as people after all. It's absolutely fascinating. Fascinating. And technology and social media is such a massive part of our lives now that I just love having these kinds of conversations all about the dark side of the internet as well as the amazing positive changes that it has made to our lives. Not only has technology made communication and information way more accessible, it's also opened up so many new jobs and career paths that never would have existed a hundred years ago. Like, of course, mine. So the world looks pretty different than it did a hundred years ago. But while we can all be incredibly positive and grateful for quite how much the world has changed, one of the themes being talked about this year is that it's really important not to forget all the people who fought during the war, everyone from the soldiers to the nurses. So before you go, I've got four book recommendations here for everyone who wants to read a bit more about the war that was supposed to end all wars. So for poetry lovers, I've got this collection of Poems from the First World War, selected by Gabby Morgan, and this is a selection of poems written from people who viewed the war from all standpoints. And it's a really comprehensive and powerful look at how badly an entire generation generation was damaged by this war. And then Love Letters of the Great War is a collection of letters written from soldiers to their sweethearts back home, and it's really just some of the most romantic and heartbreaking correspondence ever written. And if you're interested in fiction set during the war, I've got Fall of Giants, which is the first in Ken Follett's Century Trilogy. So this one follows five intertwining families and how they are all affected in different ways by the war breaking out. And then finally I've got Before the Fall by Juliet West, which is a really sad and moving love story about a woman who is living in London while her husband is away fighting in the war. So do leave me a comment below with any World War One book recommendations of your own so we can all share each other's and of course do subscribe to this channel because we post new videos every Thursday and next week we're heading off to Bath to visit the iconic bookshop Mr B's. See you next time!